Welcome, 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 welcome back to Locked On 76ers. I'm your host, Keith Pompey. Today, we're going to talk about P.J. Tucker. A lot of people have been hating on P.J. A lot of people think P.J. is time for P.J. to go. I'm going to tell you why I'm a big supporter of P.J. Tucker. Yes, a big supporter of P.J. Tucker. We'll talk about that more next on Locked On 76ers. You are Locked On 76ers, your daily Philadelphia 76ers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com Locked On today to get started. And thanks for making Locked On 76ers your first listen of the day. And we really appreciate you doing that. And for your other listeners, go to the Locked On podcast on YouTube, your team every day. Now, here's the thing. I want to talk to y'all about my man, PJ. And and I like PJ Tucker. Um, I think PJ Tucker is, a, is an asset to the Sixers, right? Now, I get it. Believe me, I do. PJ Tucker is 38 years old. PJ Tucker, and I can bring up the stats. I'm going to bring up the stats for y'all to help y'all out. Out because I know a lot of y'all are saying, Thank you, what are you talking about? Crazy. So last year, PJ Tucker, I'm not even going to go into how many games he failed to score. It was a plethora of games that he didn't score a point, a single point, right? So when you look at it, PJ Tucker last year averaged 3.5 points, right? He averaged 3.5 points and and he started in just about all the games he played, right? Played in 70-something regular season games. So we go, let me just get, I'm just going to make sure I get this right to help y'all. So P.J. Tucker averaged 3.5 points, right? And 25.6 minutes and 75 starts. He played in all 75 games, right? 75 starts. He averaged 3.9 rebounds. 0.8 assists, right? Now, he shot 39.3% from three, right? He shot from the field overall, P.J. Tucker shot 42.7% from the field, right? Power forward, he struggled at times to guard quicker guard. Uh, quicker, uh, he played power for, but he, sometimes they paired him on the wing players and he struggled, right? But the thing is, when we look at P.J. Tucker, when he was with the Milwaukee Bucks, we could talk about 3.5. The year when he was with the Milwaukee Bucks for 20 games in the regular season after being traded from Milwaukee to um, after traded to Milwaukee from the Houston Rockets, PJ Tucker averaged 2.6 points, right? He shot 39.4% from three. He shot 39.1% overall from the field. He averaged 2.8 rebounds and he played in 20 games in the regular season with one start and averaged 19.9 minutes. People in Milwaukee raved over those statistics. They did. Why? Because he didn't have to score. Because they had Giannis Antetokounmpo. They had a lot of other guys on that team who did their work. And when you look at the Sixers, P.J. Tucker, you say to yourself, what is he? He was the fifth option on the floor when he played with the Sixers this year. Sometimes, I mean, you know, and that's just in the starting lineup. Like, to be honest with you, when uh, they, DeAnthony Melton came in the game, 
the Anthony Melton was a higher option than PJ. So was just about any other perimeter player that they had. The thing is, PJ wasn't into the games to score. That's what I'm trying to say. You know, his value was great for Milwaukee. They won a championship. And for the Sixers, he did supposedly doing the same things. But I felt like other guys didn't, and didn't, didn't fare well. Now, the one thing where people got upset was or felt like they got bamboozled, bamboozled was because the following year, the, in the 2021-22 season, P.J. Tucker averaged 7.6 points. He shot 41.5% from three. He played in 27.9. But if you notice, that team really, the Miami Heat, doesn't, doesn't have the superstars that the Sixers, the Milwaukee Bucks, um, he was in Houston. They didn't have that. You had Jimmy Butler and a bunch of, I'm not going to say role players. Bam Adebayo is in a role player, but he's not a guy like a scoring threat, like a Joel Embiid, like a James Harden, like a Tyrese Maxey. Um, he wasn't like a scoring threat like Chris Middleton, Giannis Antetokounmpo. You know what I mean? So you get my drift. Like on the other teams, it was more or less – we had bona fide all stars, bona fide offensive killers who are going to go to work. Well, with with Miami, it was more of a balanced attack. We share the ball, we do stuff. You're going to get more opportunities. With the Sixers, he was more like a tip guy, right? So then other people complain about look the brother with. You know, he was like, he got paid too much. And I give it to you. I give some people will say that. The guy was, you know, he was older, a lot older than you would expect. Um, and the 76ers signed him to three years, $33 million, right? Um, you know, last year he made $10.4 million. This upcoming season, he's in line to get $11 million. And next season, he has a player option that he can pick up. And if he picks that option up, he's going to make $11.5 million. But again, it's two things that people fail to realize or they keep forgetting about. The Miami Heat wanted him back. And that money that the Sixers gave was more than what Miami was, was going to give. So when you look at that, it's one of those things where, hmm, they had to pay more than what Miami was going to pay. And then not only that, the Milwaukee Bucks was another team that was in, wanted P.J. to come back. The Bucks did. So, you know, and, and then the one thing that keeps sticking in my head that a lot of people forget about is game seven of last year's playoffs, right? Game seven. P.J. Tucker was one of the only offensive bright spots that the Sixers had. P.J. Tucker, um, in the first quarter, he was the one who kept them in the game. I mean, he was the star of the first quarter. Him and Tobias Harris were the only two. People forget, P.J. Tucker was four for six from the field, three of five on threes. He had 11 points, right, in nine minutes and 53 seconds. I mean, he was baking. I think one of the worst things that Doc Rivers did, and I get it, you look at P.J. and you say he's a fifth option, you know, but he's probably the, the seventh, eighth, maybe ninth best offensive option. But at this particular time, now let's look at this now. In the first quarter, Joel Embiid was shooting two for six. Maxie was one for three. James Harden was one for three. P.J. Tucker was carrying him. He was four for six, four for six, 11 points. In nine minutes and 53 seconds, P.J. Tucker only played 19 minutes and 42 seconds, and he only got one more shot attempt. That's it. One more shot attempt. Now, some people might say, 
but he was a minus 11 in those 11 points, right? So that 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 balances stuff out, right? Nah. Tobias Harris was a minus 21. Joel Embiid was a minus 28. Tyrese Maxey was a minus 31. James Harden was a minus 30. DeAnthony Melton was a minus 19. So when we say P.J. Tucker was a minus 11, nah, I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it. I felt like it, he was done a huge injustice. Now, right now I get it. He's 38 years old. We have a lot of people saying, look, the brother's old. It's time for him to go, right? It's time for him to go. There are certain people who think that. But I'm here to tell you, I feel like, you know, PJ isn't the problem. I get it. He's old. He's older. I get that. But I felt like he wasn't the problem. Now, Nick Nurse is, is an opportunity chance that he probably won't start, right? You know, you you seen the the video of the uh the board and you saw the Anthony Melton's name on there. I'm hearing that. Well, they also uh, it's not hearing everybody heard it that Melton, you know, could be a starter this year. And if they have a three guard lineup, Melton could be in the starting lineup. So it's one of those things where I like what pre PJ brings. Now, again, if he comes off the bench, I still think he could have that impact. Now, if he gets traded, if James gets traded, he could possibly go with James, get out of Philadelphia. I understand that. But I kind of like PJ, man. I do. I feel like a lot of people had a lot of people had high expectations, and I understand that. But no one said he was going to come here and torch the net. You know, you got other guys to do that. I mean, you need role players. You need guys like that. And I felt like P.J. fulfilled that role. I felt like he was a good role player for the 76ers. And um, I like the leadership he brings. Um, you know, if Maxi takes a step forward, if James becomes a facilitator, if, if you can get Tobias a little bit more involved, um, you know, Joel can – Oh, averaging 30 plus. The little things that PJ does helps teams win championships championships. And I I like them. I'm sorry, I do. And I know that's not the you know, that's not the uh popular thing to say in Philadelphia right about now. Like everybody is always, oh, you know, you want to kill somebody or you want to say. The teams could do way much better without them. You know, I'm here to tell you. I like him, and I think that, you know, he could be, he's going to be a, a major asset for what the Sixers are trying to do. I really do. I really do. And, uh, you know, I, I think that the guys like him, you got him, you have uh, – you have um, Pat Bev. You know, those are the type of guys that James Harden respects. Those are guys who are kind of, and you know, great locker room guys. You know, I think that's going to work out well if he comes back. I do. I do. I really do. But look, right now I want to talk to you guys about FanDuel. You know, I'm, I'm a... I'm a I'm a big fan of FanDuel, if you if you don't know that by now, right? You know, football season is about to kick off, and FanDuel is giving you the chance to win all season long. Because right now, when you bet a Super Bowl winner, you can get bonus bets every time they, they win in the regular season. Just pick any team with the Super Bowl, and you'll get bonus bets for every victory. Right, you can use your bonus bets on spreads, player props, over unders, and more. So visit fanduel.com slash locked on and start earning bonus bets with America's number one sports book. That's fanduel.com slash locked on. I'm telling you, do it today, people. Definitely. 
do it today. Thank you for making Locked On 76 of your first listen. Um, you can make Locked On Network your second listen, Locked On NBA, all types of stuff. I'm telling you, this is the best place to come and get your information. Now, let's talk about the end of the roster, right? End of the road to yeah, roster. I'll say it that way. Um, the Sixers are going to kind of do what they did before last year where they had roster flexibility. And what I mean by the roster flexibility is, is what they did is you can have 15 um, standard NBA contracts, right? And what the Sixers are going in mind right now is going into season as if they're going to have 14 of them. They want to have 14. So the guys that you see right now are most likely probably going to be the ones on the roster now. Now, again, that doesn't include the people who they're going that that doesn't include the three two way players they have, nor does it include um, the guys who they're going to uh, pick up and acquire as like rotation. I mean, excuse me exhibit 10 guys and um, what do you call it? Guys who get uh, camp invites. In the preseason, you can hold up to 20 guys and get camp invites. So right now you look at it, they have 14 regular guys, right? And then they have their three, um, they, they have their three, um, uh, two-way guys, so right there is 17. You know, they, they, there's a couple guys that they, the guy they're going to give it exhibit 10 to, so that's 18. And then next thing you know, you got to add two more guys. Now, right now, when you look at it, Montrez Harrell's going to be out for the year. So, <laughs> you know, they may just have 19 guys at, at practice and for training camp, right? Just 19. Now, he'll be there, but I'm not including him because he's not going to be practicing, right? He's not going to be working out. I don't know if he's going to be there or not, but I'm just saying. So, but the thing is, everybody was talking about uh, Turk Smith. Now, this is a guy that um, was impressive in the summer league. I feel like he'll get opportunities to be with the team. Now, again, he's going to be on a two-way, but he'll he's a guy that's going to get opportunities to be with the team and see if he could be an end of the rotation guy for as much as possible. You know, he's a guy that the the 76ers liked. He he impressed them. You know, Ricky Council, the fourth, did too. But those are young guys who, you know, basically can get some minutes and and, and do certain things or at least be with the team and, you know, uh, do some things that, Instead of the Sixers going out and guaranteeing a guy and and uh, bringing them in and and have them take up a spot and then if they want to make a trade or they want to do this, they don't have they don't have flexibility. Now the good thing about having this flexibility is because what happens is, say like if the Sixers need to match salary or they need to do this or they they want to bring in another person, right? They want to bring in a guy. For instance, in order to match salary, they would have to bring in two players while one goes out, right? So what that enables them to do, they'll, they'll have that opportunity to do that without waving someone, right? So they can do stuff like that without waving. So that's always good. And you look at last year when they were in the buyout market, they didn't have to cut anyone in order for them to bring someone in. So that's the good thing. So I think uh, that we'll see some of these two-way guys get some opportunities or uh, at least be with the team more. In the past, it was one of those things where <clears throat> you saw them early on, and then next thing you know, they just vanished, and they were with the uh, the, the, the um, Delaware Bluecoats for most of the season, and then they would come up in the end. Like, let's face it, we, we didn't see uh, – the Sixers guys until they're two-way guys until the end of the season. 
you know, so that's that's where the 76ers are right there. And, you know, that should be interesting. I mean, I, I really do. I think it's going to be interesting for them and, and for these guys to see how they develop and and where they go from there. Right. I think it's going to be it's, it's going to be really good for them. Now, the one guy like uh, uh, Turks uh, Smith, I, I really like him. I do. Now, the one thing is I think that he needs to get a little bit more in control late in the game. It seems like when the tempo steps up and it becomes more of a sense of urgency. Um, and I didn't watch a lot of the, um, the the summer league games, but the ones that I did watch, it just seemed like his play became a little bit more erratic, became more turnover prone. It kind of sped him up a little bit. Um, but you know, outside of that, I thought he was phenomenal. You know, I did. I felt like, you know, he was one of the more impressive players that I saw, you know, um, in the summer league setting. And, and what I mean by that is impressive. I'm not talking about like a Ben Simmons or, you know, a guy who's a first round pick or a lottery pick for the Sixers or one of these second or third year players. Like, you expect them to do stuff. But we're talking about in regards to an undrafted guy. Like, I felt like he took a, took advantage of the opportunities that was given to him, right? And then, uh, as, you know, he's more of a combo. But they had him playing, uh, <clears throat> you know, the one. I felt like he did a solid job for the Sixers. I really did. So, you know, you, you, you have that. You have a lot of things going on. And um, I felt like uh, he was great. He was great. You know, my man D, my, my co-host Devon, will be back with us shortly. But I want to thank you all for making Locked On 76 as your first listen every day. Every day is tomorrow on the show. You know, we'll talk more about the Sixers. We'll talk more about, you know, what I, you know, what I think and, and talk a little bit more about the James Harden situation. You know, there's a lot to talk about with this team this year. Um, it's going to be a long off season, month of August, maybe September. But, you know, hopefully uh, everything will work out for the Sixers. You know, so they got a lot riding on this season. As much as people want to downplay it, they got a lot riding on this season. So I want to thank you all for listening and have a blessed day. Peace.